Dance Masters, the first Grand Slam of the year. I have next to me Timuri Mamedinov and Nina Bezubova. Hello, how are you? Hello, good evening. Hi. Um, Timur and Nina are currently ranked number one in the WDSF ranking in Latin. Congratulations. Thank you. I bet you're happy for that and excited. Kind of. Kind of? Yeah. <laughs> is, it the, is there a bad side to it? No, it's a good side, but we are normally, we don't check it. You don't check it? Yeah, it's like... We always compete with the same couples, uh, yeah. mainly, so we know that we are in top three, four, yeah. five, so those couples could rotate, yeah? mainly top three right now. And uh, then it was, uh, it's happened that we are number one now, but it was, let's say, nothing special for us right now. Well, it was something special for me because I accidentally found it out on the 8th of March, on the Women's Day, wow. before we departed for the competition in Tokyo last week. So I was like, is my system going um, down? <laughs> Something is wrong. Like, is it how hacked? Could, yeah, yeah, how did it happen? But then, yes, then I checked it on the next day, and the next after the next day, and I realized, no, we're still there. So <laughs> uh, She was checking every day, like... It stays, it stays. So it's like when you're you're like a star, like a pop star or like a movie star, and they never Google their, their name, and when they Google, they found out stuff. Same something, again. something about this, yes, because uh, I don't know how about you, but I don't. I think I can speak in both of us. Uh, we don't uh, follow the points. Uh, which bring you to the certain uh, ranking position. We just do competitions that we have to do, that we must do, and that we want to do. And it doesn't matter if it's a Grand Slam, if it's a World Open or International Open, or even last year we danced just a simple WDSF Open competition. So I think the, yeah, the points are going from there, so it was a pleasant surprise to find out. Amazing, great. <laughs> and um, do you have any certain expectations for uh, to, tomorrow's competition? Because your competition is... We have a lot of expectations because we were preparing very much. We have some stuff which we want to try. For sure we have a new dresses and new suits for me and it will be also be excited. And of course the uh, Romanian audience uh, we expect is very warm. So we will do our best to take it and to show good performance to in order to achieve their hearts. Well, I hope that the audience is going to cheer for us, for you. Uh, we're going to be there to cheer for you, so... <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, in terms of preparations for a Grand Slam, uh, do, you, do you treat the trainings differently, or is it just like a normal competition for you? I think we do slightly. When the Grand Slam is coming, we find which are the solo dances. And we probably make a little bit of arrangements, adjustments for the solo dance because then you are observed fully, 100%, all eyes on you. So you have to be clear in certain things that you want to deliver. So I think this is the point. Let's say we expect that we we're going to dance final. <laughs> That's why we have... Hey, I'm number one at the moment. You're going to dance it. <laughs> Come on, it's still a competition. I mean, maybe... There will be a day when yeah. all the couples will be so perfect, so the judges could choose. But, but we're talking about the preparation. Of course, we prepare specially yeah. for each competition, especially for a big competition. We have not so many big competitions in the year. So it's, let's say the Grand Slam series, five for the Grand Slams, and then the final one. Uh, unfortunately, we will, we will miss one of them this year again. And of course, it's the national championship and the world and European championship, as well as that. And of course, before, in front of every main competition, we try to organize special uh, preparation for it. It doesn't matter uh, we will stay in Germany or in Russia, or even somewhere else, we'll try to do a special preparation for a competition. Interesting. Yeah, I like that. Um, and um, in terms of schedule for normal, uh, let's say you have a month that you don't go to any competition, 
How does that month look like? I know it's a long... Actually, in the schedule of WSF, uh, we don't have that month. You don't? Uh, because it doesn't have as in... In normal sports, they have these kind of holidays for two and a half months without competitions when the athletes could uh, take a rest, they could have some improvement, special preparation, and so on, and so recovery doesn't mean. In our calendar, we have competition all year long. So in each month, we have competitions. Of course, uh, for us, we choose the use when we could, let's say, skip a couple of yeah. weeks to be uh, to recover ourselves or to try new stuff. Mm. Still or smiling, still smiling. Thank always. <laughs> or to do something uh, for ourselves, maybe take a rest. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, yeah, me personally, I like to have holidays. You know, always push me to come back <laughs> to work hard. Uh, but yeah, sometimes we use this time to have holidays, sometimes to change something in our dancing or to improve some skills. Or sometimes to get just properly ill like a normal person does <laughs> once a year. And that's me, that's always me. <laughs> just once a year? Uh, yes, actually, yeah. And it major times it happens when uh, the season or like the competition yeah. time is over and when your body suddenly realizes okay nothing is happening now you can be Trying a normal human <laughs> yes so we had actually exactly a month from 17th of December 2018 to 17th of January 2019 yes oh. exactly a month and then Timur uh, came to Germany and we had a practice and he said Nina, stop. What day is today? 17th? A month. Congratulations. We haven't held hands for one month. And I was like, oh, this is terrible. Uh, actually, it happens first time. <laughs> yes. This was actually, when you said a month, I realized a checkpoint. Yeah, yes, it was one month once. was now. So that's four years together. And now, I knew. <laughs> now it just happened this, uh, let's say, Christmas and New Year celebration. And then. Actually, we should have been... We should have been practicing yeah. before, but I really got ill on the day when Timur was on the way to the airport. I called him and I said, Timur, where are you? It's like, well, I'm stuck in a very bad traffic, so I don't think I can make the plane. I was like, you can stay home because it's no use. You are coming to Germany. I'm totally ill. You can stay with the family. It's better like this and we'll get back in touch when I'm better. So. And do you, do you have some tips and tricks regarding of how, how do you recover from an illness? And then I'm gonna go to injuries because that's a personal subject that I wanna talk about because I've been injured, that's why I don't dance anymore. And I, I'm really intrigued on how you can recover from illness, from injuries, from stuff like that. Yeah. If you know some tips and tricks. You're gonna start from illness. I'm always the unlucky one. I had everything possible you can just imagine. Thanks God. I haven't broken anything yet. And I hope I will not. But, um, well, what all the doctors are saying, you keep on drinking and drinking and drinking water, hot tea, ginger, lemon water, whatever. I got very ill last year and I was even hospitalized. Uh, they had some bad thoughts about what I could have but uh, luckily they didn't confirm so they said you just had uh, have a very very bad case of flu and uh, they said because it's virus we cannot treat it with antibiotics so you just have to lay in bed drink lots of water and sleep and I was like no this is not true I cannot get well just with hot tea water and so on um, but yes, actually, I realized later that it does help mostly. So we are taking care of our water intake, uh, liquids and everything possible. We try to eat healthy to keep in the first place. Yes, yes. <laughs> At least when you're with me, you do. Yeah. So um, we try to keep it like on the daily basis that nothing bad happens in advance. But of course, when body is um, exhausted, it gives you signs anyway. And then in worst cases, it can lead to an injury. 
and after injuries, like what type of injuries did you have? Oh, actually, I had. He's an expert. I had a lot. And that's why I was looking at it because I, I, yeah. I know that. No, but in the past, I had big problems with my back, with yeah. my knees. Uh, I soft already. I was good. And then when we start dancing together, actually, mainly everything was good. Of course, I still need to check my back because uh, my spine, I need to work always with the muscles. And so I do it twice a year kind of course of special therapy mm -hmm. with kind of massages and so on with the team of the doctors who work with me for ages. Wow, okay, so you have a team that works? Yeah, yeah, at least two or three, wow. we always check in Russia. And also we have our uh, therapeut in, uh, physiotherapist in Germany who are taking care of us. And, uh, but anyway, sometimes shit happens. And I had an injury with my shoulder because the part of joint was broken, for example. And then I had to have an operation. So it was a small operation. I had some dogs there. They put two screws, screws inside. Wow. And uh, yeah, we had the kind of one month. I cannot move my arm, so second month was a recovery, it was 2015, no, 16. 16, end of 2016, beginning 2017. Yeah, kind of. So, let's say, in the end of December I have an operation, and uh, in the end of February we were supposed to start practicing. But I was so happy that my arm started to move, that actually I started to do some physical uh, things in our house, I started to take uh, snow out. <laughs> And I had very strong pain in my back later on, so we started practicing even one week later. But then in two weeks we won a national championship, so <laughs> that was actually good because we had, let's say, two months break, uh, but it was very necessary to stay. Or last year before the German championship, uh, <laughs> that was a very funny, you know, I will see like that. Yeah. <laughs> that was a very funny situation because we were. Uh, a bit slightly late uh, to the running to the practice, and we were riding bikes in Bremen. And then, uh, in one moment, my brake, uh, my bike just broke, and I flew out of the bike. Oh my god! So everything was okay, but my ear was broken apart. <laughs> so you did have a lot of injuries. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. So actually, the doctors in Germany they are very good. Yeah, yes. <laughs> they they it on. It was I, split in half. I don't exaggerate, really. Yeah, it was like a part. I was an elf. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I had kind of around 30 with something stitches. And I in nine, in 10 days, we were dancing a championship again. And you were hearing okay? So. No, I'm hearing okay, but uh, luckily we have our physiotherapist kind of working. And he was there to help me. They were gluing my ear between the rounds because it started to bleed. Because it was not enough days to recover, you know? I was cool. So you won the championship like that? No, last Unfortunately, year. Unfortunately, that we, one not. Ah, that we, one not. Yeah. Year before but. we won, but this time we were second. Okay. Because Life of the year, I promise you. <laughs> I don't think so, but yeah. It's somehow was a guided line of our practicing for the last week because I cannot move for first three days because I were not allowed to sweat, you know? Wow. Yeah. The stitches should be dry. So it was funny. So I'm an expert of injuries and she's an expert of illness. <laughs> we have a very healthy couple. <laughs> Together you make a great partnership of combating yeah. this. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but even our teachers, if, if we have, let's say, a very good period of preparation for something important and everything goes really okay or good. The teacher say, guys, something should happen. Should Something's something wrong. Really wrong. Because you are not that type of couple yeah. who has all the time everything fine. Yeah. Like it has to. And we were having a dinner with our main coach, Roberto Albanese. Uh, Timur was on the way, I think, to Bremen. And I was there a little bit earlier, so we had dinner and he said, listen, it goes suspiciously well between you two now. Something must happen. There has to be a clash. Yeah, and and I happen. was like, oh, no, everything's fine, Roberto, don't worry. We're good. 
why finally we found uh, good communication we know how to deal with the stressful situations we can end up discussions very well we are not fighting we are just discussing we are not even arguing i would say and then a few days later this happens and i first thing i said to our coach i was like you jinxed us <laughs> you next time think what you say because you said it's going to be a crash and it was a crash wow <laughs> so yeah but uh, everybody say the people who know us very close they say yeah it should sound it should be something oh my god <laughs> And because uh, you mentioned about communication, and uh, that's a dear subject to me as well. How do you communicate? Like, what if you fight? How do you go past that? And um, your personalities, I, I think, they're quite similar. I, I, they're not. I don't think the vibes so. are similar. Not. <laughs> the vibes are similar. No, right it's, now, it's, it's similar because yeah. you know we are like. During those four years, we spent so much time together that, like, uh, he even I, doesn't consider me as a friend or a woman. Yeah. First of all, <laughs> she's like more than a family, more than a sister. Yeah. So it's a part of me, yeah. or I'm part of her. It's like, yeah. and we somehow find those connections after, okay, after two years dancing together, we already were very close friends because first it was disaster. I should say the truth. From outside, maybe it looks very, let's say, nice. This uh, honey flowery period, but inside we were ready to go. But then somehow we go through that, and our coaches help us very well, especially my coach in Russia, who knows me from the young, young age, from 1998. Who's your coach in Russia? Alexander Lutinian. He was a professional. He's my coach also, meanwhile. Yes, my Russian he is coach. our coach. But from 1998, darling... Okay, no, you <laughs> say so. No, 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 yeah. So Sasha helps us a lot. Because he was like stopping us and saying, guys, just go through. Don't take care about it. Everything will be fine. And then, now... Actually, we don't know what does it mean to fight with each other. Or we don't fight. We don't fight. We don't have. Uh, okay, we could discuss sometimes things. And even if uh, Nina has a bad day or I have a really bad day, so normally we understand it in the moment when we start. So I could come and say, so today you don't touch me. I will do my job, but don't go somewhere else. Or if she has a bad day, I could understand it. So it's better to go say something. No, so we go through that, and that's how we actually proceed. We are fine. <laughs> we are fine, always. Yeah, actually, happened this situation a few weeks ago. No, when I was I was not feeling well. Something strange was happening. I never have headaches, and then suddenly I did. And something the day was not well, and. Um, a Russian coach was saying to us, uh, for, to me, to do some certain things, and I was understanding what he wants, and I was trying to do, and I couldn't do it. And I was like, Timur, but this thing I can do always easily. What is wrong with me today? So I got first uh, angry on myself, and then I said to him that, and to Timur, I was like, I can't dance like this because I can't get myself together. And I don't want to get it also on Timur. And he sees and he understands that he can't help at them in this moment. Yeah. And then Timur said, okay, don't worry. We just forget it. Go. We did the things that we had to do for today. Go, Go home, home relax. relax. And uh, because I know that you don't want to, um, how can I say in English? Uh, you don't want to explode this negative feeling what you have inside on me, that then we also would have some problems. He said, so just keep it with you, sleep it out, come back tomorrow. <laughs> just like a normal couple in real life, like if, even if you have a relationship with a person, don't get it out. It's just. Yeah. Keep, keep yourself together. But normally it's a problem for young couples, for example, when they uh, personally as a Russian who lives very often in Europe now, I understand that the difference of mentality goes very much 
about taking care about negative things, that something goes wrong and we put too much attention on that. Yeah. Then we forget about things that actually, instead of that, all other things goes well. And then we forget about that and we put all attention to the negativity. So this is wrong. And when the young couples go to the hole, why they always start to arguing or fighting to each other? Because they put attention only to negative things and then they get stuck in it. And they go deeper and deeper and deeper and it will not work, it will never work. Because you already go with this mood of going down. So somehow, I don't know who teach me or how we go there, that if something gets stuck, we just go to the next one. Yeah. We take it out for today, don't touch it, and tomorrow we go still and it's working. So this is the, let's say, a small trick which I always say to our students that you need to be a bit clever. So don't push your partner down or to be stuck on the negative thing. Think also about positive things. And that's why we are never stuck to the... Okay, if we do something which doesn't work for three times in a row, we will not do it for time. So we will try it tomorrow. If we will not work tomorrow, we'll try it after tomorrow. Then to work. <laughs> so it's easy. Yes. Great advice. Thank you. Um, now I'm gonna... I want to move a bit uh, to your history. Like, how did you start dancing? Why did you continue dancing? How did you, did you start dancing together? Tell me a bit about your background. Oh, it is first. <laughs> well, I started dancing when I was eight, back in my hometown, Riga, Latvia. I saw one TV program, I think, where it was a championship, I think, and it was a ballroom championship. And I saw the ballroom dresses with feathers. And they were all sparkling and glittering, and I said, um, I also want one of those. And then the, in my school, there were after classes, and dancing was one of it. So my best friend from my classmate, she was going there, and she said, Nina, but why don't you come with me? It's like, well, can I go alone? Yeah, yeah, sure. And this is how just my first step started. Um, then I was dancing for a while without a partner. Then I got my first partner, beginners, E-class. And then my teacher from the school, he proposed to come to his um, studio, which was in the center. So he took me there, I think, twice a week. And from there on began like normal, proper dancing. And how long did you do I didn't want to dance <laughs> when I was young. I was doing karate. And I was doing karate as well. And yeah. <laughs> I had in this studio of Ashikara Karate and uh, I like it very much. And uh, it was in the school and in Russia we have this school, it looks like a small play when the sports hall and the ballroom hall just in front of each other. So in between two doors is like five meters. So you open the door from karate school and you see the ballroom hall where is the dance. So, and uh, I was six and uh, my mom was waiting for me sometimes and she was always watching the ballroom, the dance. So, and she was always asking me that, would you mind to go? And I see always all the girls. So I need to go there. Go. One day it was the open practice and I saw the couple. So I said to mom, okay, I could try. Uh, then immediately everything goes very fast. I have, in two months, it's my first competition with three girls. Because we have three times more girls than the boys in dancing. And that was funny and everything goes very well. I did most of them karate and dancing and then suddenly a karate school just moved out to another place and I had no opportunity to go there because of uh, my parents they working and uh, my young brother I need to care about them about him so nothing left it was not even my choice so that's how I stay with the dancing and then it goes it goes it goes and it's like a drugs actually I cannot say other way it's an illness you cannot stay without dancing so even when I split with my ex-partner Katya, I said to everybody that now I stop. 
Ooh. After one and a half months, I felt so bored without dancing. And I'm still, I was teaching, I was traveling a lot with everything. Uh, I tried uh, some organization stuff to help with organizing of competitions. But I feel so bored, so I came back. And then, I have a lot of tryouts. Many of tryouts. And in one moment, I met in one camp in Russia, Olga Mechi. And she said, actually, uh, what do you think about uh, Nina? Because she's queer. I said, uh, I didn't know about that, but I was in contact with her because when I spoke with Katya, there were some rumors about Nina and Marius, they were dancing together. And I was asking Nina, is it true or not? She said, uh, actually, no, we're dancing together. But it was in the beginning, no, it was even in the end of 2013. Yeah. And then we have a first tryout in November 2014. So one year almost later, we contact to each other and then we make a tryout. It was a funny tryout. Yeah, how was it? No, when Timur, well, I knew that Timur split. I knew exactly who is uh, Mr. Dima Medinov. Um, I knew him since I was a child, but we never got in... Uh, we were never competing, I think, against uh, each other in uh, juniors or youth because he was exactly two years older always, and that, that's the difference. So we met only early amateur um, time. We were competing, yeah, but I was still younger. Anyway, doesn't matter. She keeps reminding you that. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'm so mature. I'm... <laughs> I knew exactly who he is and how he is, but... Uh, I knew that he's Russian. I don't want to move to Russia. <laughs> I don't think knowing him that he is willing to move to Germany. So my first question is how this partnership is even going to work. So when he called me, I said, Timur, first thing, I'm not interested to moving to Russia. I'm not interested in dancing for Russia. So what do you offer? Like, oh. Hmm. My talent. <laughs> okay. Uh, well... My dad. Let's see. I'll let's see. I'll just come over. We we do some steps and then we talk about all the organization because uh, we both knew from beginning on that actually the actual dancing will go well. Yeah. And this is how it was. The next big question was okay, if we do it, how we do it? This was the most complicated thing. And then uh, still till nowadays. There are these, uh, how we call it, uh, logistic problems sometimes. <laughs> ah, yeah, because we are dancing and we are living in between two countries. Uh, and we must do this because I have a Russian passport, she has uh, European passports, uh, German and Latvian. So we are not able to stay constantly in Europe or in Russia. We need to split always the days practicing and all the trips in between, let's say, to keep still possibility to come back with this allowedness of 90 days in, in a year and a half okay. a year with visa. Yeah, 90 days, it's in a half a year, but yeah. it's not as easy. They now made a more complicated yeah, uh, structure. That you cannot hard. just choose whatever 90 days that you want. It's always counting back every time you enter. So it's complicated, so the problem is also counting it all out. Yeah. So extra planning on top of yes. that. It's actually very hard logistics, yeah. I'd say, for us from beginning on. But right now it's a bit easier because we already understand how it work. Mm -hmm. And uh, luckily now uh, I get this special uh, national visa. So I'm allowed to stay in Germany till the end of July, I think, and I need to make some other steps inside to get this allowedness of stay there for a longer period. And now, but anyway, this logistics problem, they are still going. Yeah. But when we make a tryout, we have, I think, around three days of mainly talking. Really? Yeah, no, we were dancing quite a lot, but we were talking and discussing all the things. How do we see us, what we want to do, and uh, actually we realized that in the point of view how we want to dance, we are quite similar. And till now we're still in the 
process of solving the logistics. <laughs> and leaving aside a bit the logistics and uh, going through the uh, personalities and style of dancing, because you mentioned it. Um, do you think your personality in real life affects the way or influences the way you dance on the dance floor? Like your style of dancing borrowed your personality or not really? For sure, yes. I would say this is our one of our strengths that our personality and our life personality and personality on the floor very similar. Mm -hmm. And this is what makes us strong as a couple. Because uh, Nina, she is very feminine and no, this is wrong. You see? You see? This is wrong. I knew. She's feminine as in the way of look. Mm -hmm. yeah? On the floor she could look fragile a bit. Mm -hmm. That the woman you need to take care of. But in the private life, no. She is independent. That was a big shock for me when I came <laughs> from Russia for this moment. Because in Russia we meet uh, like three weeks Used to. We, we used to have another women, uh, let's say, mentality. And f by me, I don't feel that I'm different when I dance. I just feel that uh, it gives me maybe a bit more freedom to express things because in a normal life, I'm a bit more calm. Mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah. I don't know. I would say that it, uh, it depends on the perception from which point of view you're talking about. Uh, like, who sees it? Is it how do I see myself yes. or how do other people? Because I feel that these two opinions are not the same. Okay. Because I don't feel that what I'm producing on the dance floor, it's actually me. Okay. Um, in a way that... Yes. It's, it's a on. tricky question. It's a yes, tricky question. I don't yeah. feel that sexy Latin uh, woman, mm -hmm. which I'm trying to do on the floor, like because you have to be really passionate and uh, on and always, let's say, you have to be active. But I'm not like this, I think, in real life. I'm more like, uh, I don't know. Come on, I'm, I'm not the one who is wearing high heels every day and putting makeup and doing hair. I go on the comfortable way. If I feel like it, I put my mascara and my red lipstick and high heels and I go on. But that's only one day a month. And the rest of the days, I'm, I'm doing my comfortable way. And then we had these styling discussions sometimes with Timo. He said, if you buy those shoes, I'm not walking the street with you. <laughs> so it's a little bit this... Uh, I, but I think it's also a difference between the Russian mentality and European, especially German mentality, because, well, they just want to feel comfortable. Yes. They practical. want to feel good, practical. Yeah, it has to be practical, exactly. So I'm a very practical woman, I think. <laughs> what? I will say quite. <laughs> it, it, it is a tricky question, and I'm not even sure if someone asks that question I can answer it but yeah but I like that on the dance floor I can choose whatever personality I want and there I have no problems with whatsoever I can imagine my thing my myself something and I can try to produce it on the floor the next day uh, I can think about something else and I will deliver that one so my imagination runs wild sometimes on the floor very so important. this is how I can express and I can change and I can offer something different, I think. And where do you get inspiration from? Like, for example, who are your idols or if you want to uh, create new choreography, uh, what inspires you, like feelings or music or other style of dances? Before like going to this question, we are definitely not the couple who changes choreographies. We are here a little bit uh, too old school and old style people. We like to work on what we have and deliver it to the next level. And from there on something happens because if something is not working, we really... 
I'm um, forcing Timur to still keep that piece and we still have to work on that. And he said, Nina, come on, we are working on this for three years. Can you please let it go? Give it a week. Maybe. Let's take some lessons and we talk about this. Maybe then we get some new information and then we can work on that further. And then no. Then I give up. I realize, okay, this small piece uh, will not change uh, anything. So, but generally we even are dancing the same choreographies what we danced from beginning on. Maybe some places we... One figure, for example, I got inspired from one of our student couples. I just saw, I liked how it looked. And um, when we were talking about choreography within our dancing, I said, listen, I saw this piece, what about we work on that? But we made it completely different. Then we were watching some videos from professional dancers. We saw some combination of steps and we liked it because it was basic and we de decided to develop that as well, but it doesn't look like the original version. So it depends always. Sometimes something happens in the practice, we make some mistakes and then we realize, oopsie daisy, this was very nice. Yeah. Or I know that very often by me happens something, especially on the competitions or on the practices, like important ones, somewhere in the camp, like when, you're, when your body is already tired, but you are still doing. And then some certain things pop out. And I was like, oh, Timur, what was this? And yeah, this was actually nice. What did I do? <laughs> okay, uh, okay, I think it was something like this. So if I had to tell what I did just now, I don't remember. So he's always the observer uh, for two of us. He knows exactly what I'm doing and where and uh, how. That, that's one important role. I always <laughs> try to give her an easiest way to fix the things, you know? To use the body flow or the weight flow. And sometimes her imagination just go very deep inside, so it's hard to do. <laughs> sometimes very hard. But about the routines, is actually is not really correct. What you said, we are not really changing the routines. We have very long routines. And sometimes we just add something extra, extra, and we start from different places. That's how. Yeah, it, that's, that's a it, trick. It looks. Yes, but the routines were from beginning on long. Yes, but we change it already. Except Paso Doble, we change everything. And Jack. Really? You yeah. see, I don't remember. <laughs> Here it comes. Here it comes. Yeah. I think that I'm dancing this since ages. Yes. But we never do it like complete, change completely. We just make it once, one year ago, with uh, after a mini Grand Slam, actually. We stay for. Uh, lessons with Carol and me and we just make a new samba routine completely complete new so just to get new feelings new I don't agree this is not really correct what you are saying here now what, what? completely new no he's lying to you people uh, now, uh, now, you see? No. Now, come going? on <laughs> that's not true no we we said that we have to have completely new but Carolyn is that type of woman and teacher she doesn't want to throw everything in a rubbish bin and give you something completely completely new she's asking always so what do you want to keep or which uh, steps which figures which uh, maybe some yeah. combinations of so we have some figures from the past because everybody has this figures, yes so and then uh, we made a list no, we made the list from what we want yeah, and to there. add something what we want extra and she had to construct it all. So I was there just as an observer and they were standing there and writing everything on the paper. So it was not actually dancing and trying something, it was planning, constructing and doing um, a construction work. I yeah. can't tell yeah. this something else. Yeah, we build up it. And actually was made it on the paper. I never did it in my life before, but with Kellen it's very interesting to do. We construct everything on the paper, and then we try, we make it on the hole, then we put the steps on. That was cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So a new technique of teaching, let's say. Uh, sort of like receiving information more like. I think it's kind of very, very old technique, which 
kind Wait. of mist. Yeah. Mm. Or that, yes, yeah. indeed. And in terms of um, um, what makes a dense couple great, like what 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 are the characteristics of a great dance couple? It's very good question. Good question. Patience, understanding, communication, dedication, patience. Again? Yes, it starts and it ends with patience. <laughs> um, I would say I'm a good. I think first of all you really need to love what you are doing. You need to love yourself. And you need to be open to share your feelings, your freedom or your love of what you're dancing with your partner. So it's kind of, you know, more philosophic philosophy of the couple. To be great is not just to doing things. Yeah. It's about to feel the things. It's about sharing also. And sharing. To share it also means that the other part <clears throat> needs to accept it. And uh, what I see, this, this is, is the big... Uh, yeah, this is where the problems or the discussion starts. Where uh, the other part of the partnership, the other half, is not accepting what is being shared with so sometimes it's difficult because we all have our own opinions but you have to realize it's not only you alone dancing then you should choose another art of dance but here is a couple dancing and you have to find compromises sometimes and sometimes you have to accept that there is no compromise what you want to deliver because what he is saying is much better Uh, or sometimes you just need to accept that the second part of your couple just not ready to accept anything this day. <laughs> uh, it's more this way around that sometimes I'm not ready to accept anything, but it happens. It happens, obviously. Yeah. yeah. And in terms of the, let's say, technical aspects, like if you watch a, a competition or a couple, uh, what would you like to notice? I uh, you can answer. I think I will skip this because 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 yes, I'm agree. <laughs> First of all, the technical aspect, technique as itself is the base. It's a foundation. It has many layers and it has many years of experience. It should it should have. It I don't know how to say it right, but you should have this years of experience to understand it, to understand the technique. Not in the way how to do a technique, but in the way how to dance it. And this is a big difference. And when we, when we are watching to the floor, and sometimes we could see that the couple is doing nice walking actions or nice body movement, but they are not dancing this technique. And it's just a mechanical things what they are doing but they are not dancing this. They are inside nothing uh, special. Or they are doing this is what happening very often right now. Uh, dancers are going too much to find an effect and a very fast track to look good without real understanding how and why it should be like this. And then you could see only effects or only actions, but not really deep technique. And you could see that the couples doesn't have a scoop. That's why we are lucky that we are quite old enough for this, that we reach to start from a really, now it's called old school, from a technique it. book of Walter Laird, of Alex Moore uh, in Borum and we were studying with the great teachers who were giving us a good information from let's say 
correct, fundamental things. Fundamental things yeah. No, what I can only add is uh, lately uh, when we are asked to do workshops or uh, lessons, we always, everybody is asking us to do partnering skills. And we are like, well, yeah, because you have a one of the best or if not the best or um, the most visible partner in skills what you can deliver and we're like but you have to understand it doesn't come from push pull look me in the eyes touch me here go down there uh, spin me faster grab me harder Move me. <laughs> yes uh, it goes first of all from personal connection with the floor so if you understand your balance, your footwork, your leg actions, your own, not the ones from your partner, because you have to be in balance, you have to be in time, you can, you have to accelerate and decelerate by yourself, or at least to know how to do it, and then if the partner helps you, well, then you can do it 10 times better. But the understanding of the weight over the feet, over the floor, is not there lately. This is what I we what we see, and then uh, these special things they are coming out exactly from these fundamentals because you get a bigger, um, under deeper understanding from what is happening within you, what you are capable of, because every person is very individual and they have different feelings for everything, even physical and emotional. So these two also have to come together. And then um, if you can transmit this to your partner and he gives you a different aspect from himself and then you just blend it and melt it together and see what comes out in the partnership. And, uh, unfortunately, I cannot do the things, for example, what Timo does. And I'm not ashamed of it, not for a bit. He's a great spinner. I'm trying and working hard. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit better. <laughs> because I said from beginning on, I was like, Timur, I have to tell you a question. <laughs> Cut this out. I cannot turn and spin. <laughs> I was like, I rather do the développé. I can, I'm flexible. Yeah. You can stretch me wherever you want, but I'm with this... And he's not flexible. <laughs> so I think we found a good... Um, but still, he's trying to extend more and stretch more. I'm trying to get these uh, actions of turns and spins and accelerations. I have better gravity points. You just need to accept that. <laughs> that my gravity point is always with me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I can be the light one. Yeah. So uh, it's nothing bad. It's just uh, you have to work on no, what Timo said in the beginning. If I know that, if I know that I'm not good at some things I know that I'm good at the other things so I just need to work on my best parts even more that they come out extremely and the ones that I'm not that good I just have to keep them on the proper level and try to get them higher but I know that I'm not gonna wake up one day and turn like Nuriya or Barishnikov I'm I can't yeah? yeah first connect yourself then you connect with something else. Yeah, that's true. Great, thank you so much. Uh, wonderful words. Um, I have one last question from our audience, and it's about uh, uh, Nina's style. I'm sorry, Timur. It's about... Oh, <laughs> it, my style is the practical one. <laughs> Not on the daily basis, but on the dance floor, okay. because you always have such amazing dresses. Um, and uh, how do you how do you create those? I mean, I know you work with Vesa, right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, how do you create? And how do you translate your style into that those dresses? Well, first of all, I must tell you all that it was my dream to have one day. Uh, Vesa design dress. I thought that it's never gonna happen. And then it did work out, and now I am the only WDSF girl who is being officially sponsored from Vesa Designs. And I could not be more proud of that, really. I 
I have really no words about this. So um, we got to know each other, we met personally, we spoke, they, we had a great connection from beginning on. Of course it was not that, that it went immediately, but you touch a little bit here, touch a little bit there, and then you get this comfortable feeling. And then you realize how they work, they understand, because I must say Vesa and Luca, they told me that they actually follow WDSF competitions or the finals, sometimes they're watching videos, and they said, you are our favorite couple. So we would like to work with you because it's not because of your result, because we are not, let's say, world champions, we are not the European champions, yet, yes. but never mind. <laughs> so uh, they said it's not about the placement, it's about how we feel with the couple and what they produce on the floor. So what you show on the floor, we like it very much and we would like to offer our part. So first dresses were, I said, do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Watch some videos of mine, I can send you. Um, and then give me some suggestions, like, what do you do? I even went to London first time to the showroom and I tried every single dress that there was in the showroom. <laughs> so just we can a little bit find the style, which is fit suiting me better. Then we realized that actually everything what they do suits me. This was the big problem. <laughs> and then we had to decide. Uh, we made a decision for that time and then we were not afraid to experiment, let's say. And they said to me also from beginning on, even if it's a sponsorship, we would like to know what you would like to have. Or give us some ideas. I can tell them, I want open legs or mm, I want a closed dress, sleeves or super long back or very deep décolleté. I want fringes, I want um, volants or how they're called? Uh, the ruffles. Yeah. Ruffles, yes. So, and then they work on it. And I think it's, um, yeah, it's a great way like this that they hear me, I hear them. And sometimes even I said, listen, because there was a certain moment where teachers wanted one, uh, I wanted the other one. Timur was not sure uh, which would be the best from those. Yeah. Then uh, Luca and Vesa were also getting confused from me because I was confused in the first place. I asked to make them something like a design um, based on what we spoke in the team. Then I realized that actually um, I don't like it. And at one certain moment, I just put everything aside and I said, you know what, do whatever you want. This is the idea. I said there was one similar dress which they were making for Joanna Lunas back days. I said, idea is something like this, just make me one. And then they made this fantastical silver dress with um, scarves for the German Open 2017. Yes. Yes, where I had four different scarves on the same dress and the dress looked every time totally different and everybody wow. was commented, commenting it uh, tremendously well. So from now on, I just guys do whatever you want. So now, actually for tomorrow, it's also, I would say it's a new style. Okay, excited. A very, very, I would say unexpected. It's very different in comparison to what you had just now before. Yeah. Yeah. My, my personal favorite one is the leopard print one. I love that one. <laughs> That's the favorite of everybody. <laughs> yes, the cool one. Actually, those one was made especially for a show. Yes, my next dresses, let's say they are um, similar, let's say, style or uh, silhouette mm. is from that dress, so. Great. Let's see and surprise the whole audience. Yeah, yeah. If they're gonna like it or not, but you know what? I don't care, I like my dresses anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, because I have to dance in them and yeah. I really, yeah. I think it was actually now the, First time Timur that so in what? our career I took a dress for a practice and I tried to dance it in the practice. Second, but okay. So, yeah, true. But there is nothing what could uh, go wrong. Go wrong, yeah. yeah. It's, it will I was be. so excited but a little bit also afraid how it's gonna be, this new style on me, that I said, okay, I think I would like to move a little bit uh, on the private lesson which we had. Great. Well, I'm wishing you good luck tomorrow. Cannot wait to see you guys. 
and cheer for you. And uh, let's hope for the best. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your time. It was a pleasure to speak with you. Bye-bye. My pleasure. Bye. Bye.